When Concorde first pierced the clouds in the late 1960s, the world watched in awe. Humanity believed that a new age had dawned, one where passenger travel would be measured not in hours, but in minutes. The dream was audacious, cross oceans at supersonic speeds, connect continents in half the time, and transform distant cities into neighboring suburbs. For the first time, the sky seemed limitless, yet, with the excitement came an unexpected consequence. Thunderous claps tore through the skies with each flight, rattling windows, shaking foundations, and sending waves of anxiety through communities below. The joy of speed collided with the reality of the urban environment. By the turn of the millennium, supersonic flight over land had been largely abandoned. It was a bittersweet retreat of victory of caution over ambition, a reminder that technology, no matter how advanced, must coexist with human life, but the story does not end there. 25 years later, a new chapter is unfolding. NASA, in collaboration with Lockheed Martin, is determined to restore the promise of supersonic travel, this time with a revolutionary twist. Enter the X-59 Quest, an experimental aircraft designed to make supersonic flight silent. This isn't just engineering its hope-taking flight. A bold attempt to reconcile speed with serenity. The abandonment of supersonic flight in previous decades was not a simple overreaction to a few hundred broken windows. It was a complex compromise. Engineers dreamed of high-speed travel, of pushing humanity closer to the sound barrier and beyond. But city dwellers demanded silence. Civilization and ambition clashed, and ambition yielded. Yet decades of inactivity were not wasted. Innovations in fuel efficiency, aerodynamics, and turbulence management continued quietly in the background. We learned to model airflow more accurately, to measure not just decibels, but the human experience of sound itself, how a noise is perceived, how it interrupts daily life, and how it shapes our response to the skies above. From this knowledge emerged a radical idea. What if we didn't just mute the sonic boom, but reshaped it? Much like tuning a radio to the right frequency, engineers began to explore how to adjust the very structure of the shock wave. By stretching its peaks and softening its edges, the deafening boom of yesterday could become a subtle whisper today. To understand why this was necessary, we must step into the world of physics. As an aircraft approaches the speed of sound, pressure waves form around it. At subsonic speeds, these waves escape harmlessly ahead of the aircraft. But at supersonic speeds, the plane catches up with its own disturbances. These waves compress into a narrow cone known as the Mach cone, where air pressure spikes dramatically before dropping just as sharply behind the aircraft. On the ground! This abrupt change in pressure is perceived as the iconic double clap of a sonic boom, a sharp, startling sound that announces the arrival of human speed beyond nature's normal limits. In the past, engineers tackled this problem in the simplest way possible. They designated zones where supersonic booms could occur and zones where they could not, effectively banning supersonic flight over land. The oceans became the only playground for these speed demons. But with modern computational tools, the approach has evolved. Shock waves can now be mapped precisely, controlled in space and time, stretched and smoothed. What once was a destructive clap can now be tuned into a quiet murmur, lost amid the urban symphony of city life. This transformation is also reflected in regulatory thinking, where previously the mere presence of a sonic boom was intolerable. Today's authorities consider psychoacoustic metrics how humans actually perceive and react to sound, and the distribution of energy over time. A boom is no longer judged simply by its intensity, but by its impact on daily life. It's a remarkable shift in mindset, one that acknowledges that technology must harmonize with humanity rather than dominate it. The need for supersonic innovation extends beyond curiosity or prestige. Today's world is vast and fragmented. Direct flights between cities are rare and layovers consume precious hours. Supersonic aircraft promise to bridge these gaps, accelerating business, science, and critical deliveries. They will connect remote economic centers where every minute carries immense value, reducing travel times that once span continents into a matter of hours. This is not about replacing conventional airliners overnight. It's about augmenting our global network, delivering speed where it matters most. Modern supersonic engineering has moved far beyond brute force. It's no longer just about engines. It's about the entire architecture of the aircraft. The X-59 Quest features a long, narrow nose, carefully contoured fuselage, and hidden air intakes. Its wings and impenage are designed not only to lift, but to manage shock waves, guiding them in a way that minimizes disturbance. Each choice is deliberate, 
backed by thousands of calculations, wind tunnel tests, and simulations. The plane is a symphony of physics and ingenuity, a carefully choreographed ballet in the sky. Equally critical is the commitment to testing, thousands of flight hours, meticulous surveys, and careful observation of shock wave behavior on the ground. Ensure that the technology works not just on paper, but in reality. The X-59 serves as a living laboratory, demonstrating that controlled supersonic flight over populated areas is possible. The aircraft itself is a marvel. Born from Lockheed Martin Skunk Works in partnership with NASA, the X-59 is part of the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator Program. Its mission is clear, transform the sonic boom into something quiet, enough to coexist with urban life. Its most striking feature is its massive, elongated nose, which accounts for nearly a third of the aircraft's overall 99.7-foot length. The pilot's traditional forward view is replaced entirely by NASA's sophisticated XVS external vision system. Cameras, synthetic imaging, and infrared sensors merge into a 4,000 digital display that guides the pilot with clarity and precision. The EVS 3600 system further enhances vision under poor weather and night conditions, ensuring that safety and performance are never compromised. Propulsion comes from the F41 for, for GE100 turbojet, a modified engine derived from the US Navy's FA18 Super Hornet. Mounted atop the fuselage, the engine ensures smooth airflow underneath the aircraft, preventing the formation of concentrated shock waves. The X-59 can cruise at Mach 1.4 approximately 937 miles per hour at 55,000 feet, producing an EPN dB of just 75 roughly the sound of distant thunder, far below the noise of conventional airliners. The X-59 also borrows trusted components from other aircraft, the cockpit canopy, an ejection seat from the T-38 Talon, landing gear from the F-16, and life support systems from the F-15 Eagle. These choices combine cutting-edge innovation with proven reliability, keeping costs manageable. NASA's contract for the demonstrator totaled to $147.5 million, a fraction of what a completely bespoke supersonic plane might have required. The program has faced delays, with the first flight originally scheduled for 2022, now postponed to 2025, but progress has been steady and relentless. The engine installation, external display of the demonstrator, and rigorous engine and electromagnetic testing have all been successfully completed. NASA F-15 research aircraft flew supersonic test runs over the Mojave Desert to measure the shock waves the X-59 will generate. Taxi tests at Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, confirmed ground handling, braking, and sensor operations, bringing the aircraft ever closer to its historic first flight. Unlike many experimental X-planes whose technologies remain trapped in blueprints, the X-59 is tangible. Its success could change the regulatory landscape opening the skies to a new generation of supersonic transport. Following the first flight and citizen surveys to assess the impact of the low boom design, regulators may approve a broader rollout, potentially ushering in successors to Concorde and redefining commercial aviation. As early as the 2030s, the implications are profound. Supersonic travel could revolutionize global business, scientific collaboration, and critical logistics. Remote cities could be connected like never before and specialists could traverse continents in hours instead of days. Aviation, often constrained by time and geography, may finally break those boundaries. As the X-59 prepares for its maiden flight, it carries more than engineers' calculations or NASA's ambitions. It carries the hopes of a world eager to reconnect, to experience speed without sacrifice, to embrace innovation without disrupting the life below. This aircraft is not just a machine, it's a statement, a bold proof that humanity can dream, adapt, and overcome. Will the X-59 pave the way for an era of quiet, efficient supersonic travel? Or will regulators and technical challenges demand decades more of patience? Only time will tell, for now, the skies wait, filled with anticipation. And we, the witnesses to history in motion, can only imagine the sound of progress silent, swift, and unstoppable. If you enjoyed this exploration into the X-59 and the future of supersonic flight, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Share your thoughts below. Will we see a world where supersonic travel is the norm? Or are we still decades away from that dream? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next journey through the skies of human innovation.